I read a, a poll just yesterday that white Republican suburban women are now going to vote Republican. Why? It's almost like roaches voting for raid. I actually think election deniers being put into office it used to be just former President Donald Trump. Now it's everyone running on the Republican side. They're voting for a cult. Remember that. It's a cult. It's not Republicans anymore. Oh. Gosh, I don't even know what to do with that. The ladies of The View, they're back at it, ramping up their attacks on conservatives with just four days before election night. That is a great place to kick off our discussion with our Friday company. Joining us now, David Harris, Jr., the host of The David J. Harris Show, and Mary Walter, the host of Life with Mary Walter. David, I love it. You're there at mar a -Lago. We're going to get to that in a minute. But I do want to start with you. If the ladies of The View are this unhinged now, I, I've, I'm, I'm worried about Wednesday morning after the Republicans oh, take back the House and the Senate. Oh, my goodness, goodness John. It is going to be amazing. I mean, I even just had a brain fart thinking about it. Uh, it's going to be absolutely <laughs> insane to see these ladies of The View lose their mind. I mean, I'm all about liberal tears. I'm all, I'm all about the, the, the tears of liberals that have been lying to the American people, have been pushing divisive rhetoric, have been trying to uh, divide and conquer the country, and just peddled propaganda. That's what the ladies of the view do. For Sonny to say that uh, white women uh, voting for Republican is like voting for their own demise, uh, relating them to cockroaches, I mean, that's just so, it's evil. It's, it's, it's totally evil in my book, in my opinion. Nobody should get away with doing that. Uh, hopefully the black women that see that understand that she's trying to shame them. And uh, hopefully the white women that, that are watching it uh, see right through that mess as well. I think they're going to have a rude awakening come Wednesday because it's all about MAGA Americans, baby. <laughs> Well, Mary, the interesting thing is they point, they just paint everyone with such a wide brush that everyone in the Republican Party is a monolith, and they're not. I mean, they point out that there are so many white suburban women who are, are going to vote Republican. I don't know that many people, those people would identify maybe as MAGA, but they're going to vote for a Republican. These are the same people who say that Republicans are the ones dividing the country, yet they're talking about cockroaches, cults. I mean, they're the ones spreading this kind of terminology. Uh, first of all, you could not find a more insipid, uninformed group of women if you tried than the than these people on The View. Since Barbara Walters left, the thing has just gone downhill. As a woman, not speaking for all women, unlike the women on The View, they are insulting to women because they're like a stereotype of what women are. Joy Behar hasn't let a guest complete a sentence since, I, I think, like 1998. Uh, she's awful. Sonny Hostin's a flat-out racist. Whoopi Goldberg is, you know, they're, they're all in the tank. It's ridiculous. To David's point, you know, uh, speaking that women being able to see through this, you know, black women or white women, those women who can see through this, and to your point, Lindsay, who understand exactly what's going on here, are not watching The View. What I, I actually will watch it the day after the election, and I may start drinking at 10 a.m. when they go on the air just so I can enjoy the meltdown. I'm going to watch it for entertainment purposes oh, yeah. only. They are circling the drain, and they are destroying themselves, and that is what is happening in so many facets of the left. It is fascinating to watch because they haven't woken up to it. They don't see what they're doing, and it's great. Right. Um, hey, uh, David. John Fetterman apparently fired his ad team and hired a 10-year-old to make his latest campaign ad because I want to show you what it looks like. Mr. Fetterman. Yeah? You need any help? I'm running for the U.S. Senate, kid. I need all the help I can get. You want a drink? Thanks. Hey, kid. Catch. What's a off? Um, I'll, I'll tell you when you're older. David, so he's clearly trying to make this recreated Mean Joe Green ad from decades ago. I, I just, it's pathetic at best, and I think he does need a lot of help. That's the one part of the ad that's true. Yeah, it's absolutely true, Sean. He needs a lot of help, and I don't think anybody, not a 10-year-old, uh, not even Elon Musk, as much as he's bringing much-needed change to Twitter, I don't think anybody could help Fetterman. Uh, every attempt that he makes to try to get through a sentence without bumbling and sounding worse than Joe Biden, uh, he, he fails miserably. He sounds worse, or he's Joe Biden 2.0. I mean, he can't get through a sentence. His cognitive decline or repair, whatever's going on there, uh, it's it's obvious to everybody that watches. And I just keep asking the question, how did he even get in the position 
to be in this race. I mean, these are the this is the best that the Democrats have to offer for Pennsylvania. Are you kidding me? I mean, they are they are absolutely desperate. Fetterman's not, there's hopefully Pennsylvania makes the right decision. It does not allow that man to represent them. That that's that's a hope and prayer for me. Well, the interesting thing is, Mary, I don't think this is the kind of ad you went out when everyone is concerned that you're not fit to run and right. that you do need help. This is not the kind of ad that you put out four days before an election. Yeah, this was an eighth grade AV project. Some kids somewhere along the line got credit for making that ad. It was awful. And it's not relevant. If they're trying to bring in younger voters, they don't remember that ad. Like Sean said, this is from like the 70s. So the younger audience doesn't know this ad. They have no no clue what it was about. The, the hit at Trump, of the obscene hit at Trump at the end, was was just horrible. It was disgusting. It was so lowbrow. But John Fetterman is that guy. He tries to be like that working class, crass kind of guy. What we should be asking here when this is all said and done, because honestly, I think Fetterman may win this, is what is it about voters that excuse all of this to just say, oh, well, I'm going to vote for him. They can't name a policy of his that he likes. All they can say is, well, you know, Oz is a carpetbagger. And I think the other question we need right. to be asking nationally is how impaired is too impaired? Not making fun of him, but he has a problem. And I think we need to acknowledge that. We've got Joe Biden, John Fetterman. Where's the bar for impaired where we finally say, I'm sorry, but you're disqualified to run? Hmm. Yeah, great question. David, Mary, thanks for being here. Obviously, four days will we'll figure out if Pennsylvania voters are going to vote for John Fetterman. Mm -hmm.